So today we start uh, Fourier series. Uh, remember, before starting Fourier series, uh, we talked about uh, the Maclaurian series of a function, the Taylor series in general. Uh, we did the motivation. How, how did the Taylor series idea start? Uh, why do we need it? Uh, of course, we didn't go into uh, too much details because this is not the Taylor series course. Uh, it was done, I assume it was done in calculus too. Uh, we might spend some time later on it, uh, but for now, I just want you to remember that uh, the Maclaurin series is used to approximate functions merely. Uh, for some functions that we can't find uh, specific values like this integral, uh, we can use uh, the Maclaurin series or the Taylor series. Uh, so now we, we start uh, the Fourier series, uh, and again, uh, what is the Fourier series? Uh, the main idea in uh, Fourier series, the main idea is, remember, for Taylor series, so if I write it this way, for Taylor series or Maclaurian series, uh, the polynomials are used to approximate any differentiable, in fact, not differentiable, infinitely differentiable function. Uh, why do we see polynomials? Because if you look at the definition of uh, the Maclaurian series, you see these powers of, of x, right? So x to the 0, x to the 1, x squared, and so on. So we're using uh, polynomials to approximate uh, infinitely differentiable functions. Why do we say infinitely differentiable functions? Because if you look at the definition of the Maclaurian series, you see these, uh, these derivatives. Now, what is the idea of the Fourier series? So the Fourier series, basically, uh, it uses cosines and sines to approximate what? Not any differentiable function, but any periodic function. Simply, uh, what do we mean by a periodic function? A periodic function, simply, is a, th is a function that repeats itself. Uh, for example, if you, if you draw this block here, Imagine like y equals x squared. Now, if this function starts repeating this way, we call this function uh, a periodic function. Now, the idea, we want to use the sine and cosine uh, to find estimates uh, for these periodic functions. Uh, so it is clear for us that uh, we, we have to define uh, periodic functions. So what's the meaning in the first place? Uh, what is the meaning of a periodic function? Uh, a periodic function, again, geometrically, geometrically, uh, it is a function that repeats itself. Okay, it keeps repeating itself, uh, like the one we just uh, showed. Uh, mathematically, what's the definition? Uh, so let of uh, on a certain domain not necessarily it's not necessarily defined on the whole real line the domain of the function can be any interval uh, but if if it was defined on uh, the real line uh, so a function so let this be a given function uh, we will say we say that f is periodic period P if there exists a number. So this P here, uh, it's a number. Uh, we will take it as a positive number such that uh, f of x plus P equals f of x for all x in the domain. In this example, it is uh, the, real, the real numbers. Okay. Uh, so what is the meaning uh, of this? definition. Uh, if we make a little graph, so again imagine you have this block here and this block, let's say it repeats itself. Like this. Uh, let's say roughly this is negative 1 uh, and this is 1. Uh, so the length, let's say, of this block is 2 ok 
okay uh, so if you agree this function repeats every two units so we, we will say the period is two okay this is geometrically now what do we mean by f of x plus p equals uh, f of x if you take any number for example if you take this number here zero if you add two to this number you get exactly this so the two numbers have the same image for example for example if you take this number here and you add two you will reach something here it has exactly the same image as the starting point and so on so think of this function as uh, if it's repeating itself every p units now the most popular and the well-known periodic functions for anyone uh, are the sine and cosine so if we take the function sine x if we look at the graph of sine x this is it we know it it stops here at 2 pi then it starts repeating so it, it will go this way down up and so on right so for us from the figure this function has period 2 pi because it repeats every 2 pi units but mathematically what does it mean it means if you compute f of x plus 2 pi so if you take any number you add 2 pi the image is the same as the image of the original number uh, so what is this this is sine just to show you the computations how things work sine x plus 2 pi if you apply the identity this is sine x cosine 2 pi plus cosine x sine 2 pi uh, we know that uh, sine 2 pi is 0 cosine 2 pi is 1 uh, so basically you are left with sine x which is just f of x so we've shown that f of x plus 2 pi equals f of x this is exactly the definition of a periodic function but what is p in this case p in this case is uh, 2 pi so my conclusion is so the function sine x is periodic uh, of period 2 pi right okay uh, another quick example uh, if we take the function cosine x again we all know that the period of cosine x is 2 pi but how do we show it so if we take f of x plus 2 pi this is this which is just using the identity now remember again sine 2 pi is 0 this is 1 uh, so this is cosine x <coughs> which is f of x so the function uh, is periodic so f of x equals cosine x is periodic of period 2 pi uh, for example if we take the function tan x uh, so tan x we know it right so if we draw it before solving So remember this is <coughs> minus pi over 2 uh, this is pi over 2 uh, and uh, the curve is like this it keeps repeating this way uh, so i think we all agree uh, that in this example what is the period the period is pi it's not 2 pi we will comment on this uh, so let's see mathematically this is from the, the graph so let's see uh, for the function tan x what happens exactly so if we compute f of x plus pi this is tan x plus pi which is now the tan is sine over cosine if you apply the identities for the sine it is sine x cosine pi plus cosine x sine pi and down cosine cosine minus sine sine we know that cosine pi is negative one this is zero this is zero this is negative one uh, so we are left with minus sine x over minus cosine x which gives us so the minus is cancelled and we have sine over cosine which is tan and that's your 
function. So in this example, <coughs> so tan x is periodic, but this time its period is what? It is pi, not 2 pi. And we need to notice what happened exactly. Why is it pi, not 2 pi? Uh, for the sign, for the sign alone, it's not pi. It is 2 pi. So we had an extra negative here with the sign. Then for the cosine, the same thing. We have a negative, but because we're dividing the two functions, the negative was cancelled. This is why we reached pi, not 2 pi. Uh, but if we look back at the graph again, if you look at this, the tan function again, what about, so we said, we said in this figure, graph, the function repeats every pi units. What about if you take this block? So this block has length 2 pi. <coughs> now, does this block repeat itself? Yes, it does. So we can say, okay, the function tan x, okay, it has a period of pi, but also we can say it has a period of 2 pi. Uh, so in general, in general, this is a property of periodic functions. So what is uh, the property? We'll say if f is periodic of period p, then n p is a period. What is n for all positive integers n. Uh, so basically p, 2p, 3p, and so on. All these uh, are periods uh, for the function. Uh, geometrically, it's very clear. If we do it quickly. So if you imagine uh, your function like this. So this is the main block. Then if you draw these repetitions, So if your function repeats every p units, so if you take this part, copy and paste, you can instead, you can take uh, this part, which has length 2p and copy paste. You can basically take this part, which has length 3p and so on. So basically you can look at the period as p, 2p, 3p and so on. Let's see why. Why? That means, let's prove uh, this is a property. So, so we are proving, geometrically it's very clear, uh, but in terms of the equations, uh, we want to prove that uh, if the function has period p, then all uh, positive multiples, integer multiples of, of this period uh, are periods. So the idea is, so let's say f has period p. Again, we are assuming by definition that uh, the period is a positive number. We're not taking uh, negative periods. Uh, so this means f of x plus p equals f of x, right? For all x in the domain. So in particular, uh, if we substitute, if we substitute x plus p, so if you go to x, you replace it with x plus p. For example, for example, if the period was 2 pi, if you replace x by x plus 2 pi, the identity is still true because this is a true for any x. So if you replace x by anything like x plus 1, x plus 2, it's still true. We're replacing it by x plus p. So this equation becomes f of x plus p. So this is the replacement of x. But then you have another p in this equation. This is equal to f of x plus p, the replacement of x, right? Now, from the first equation, from this equation here, what is f of x plus p? It is equal to f of x. So I can say this is equal to f of x. Now, if you take the first part of the equation, so this is f of x plus 2p, and the last part, it's equal to f of x. So if you take x, you add 2p, the same image, you get the same image exactly as of x, f of x. So this means 2p is a period, right? Because this is the definition. What is the definition of a periodic function? It is this definition, which says if you add a number to x, you still have the same image. Now, in this case, 
we added a number. What is, what is that number? If it's 2p, when we added 2p, we still have the same image. So the period is 2p. You can do this again. So now, so what we reached is that f of x plus 2p equals f of x, right? So here, replace again x by x plus p. What do we get? We get f of x plus p plus 2p equals f of x plus p. But this is exactly f of x plus 3p. And because f is periodic of period p, f of x plus p is f of x. So again, you're saying that if you replace x with x plus 3p, so if you're adding 3p, you still have the same image, which means f is of period 3p, and so on. So if we keep doing this, of course, this can be done by induction in general, but because some of you uh, have not seen uh, mathematical induction before, I'm avoiding it. Uh, but this is like the simple idea behind uh, the proof. Uh, so this shows that, uh, so the conclusion in this example, so if P is a period, then you can say 2P is a period, four, uh, sorry, 3P is a period, 4P, and so on. You can, you can have uh, infinitely many periods. Uh, so going back to our examples, so for sine x, uh, we had the period 2 pi, but that means you can have the period multiples of 2 pi. So 4 pi is still a period, 6 pi is still a period, and so on. For cosine x, what is the period? It was 2 pi, but again, you can take all multiples, and so on. What about the tan? The tan, your period was pi, you can take all multiples, you, so you're taking all these things, right? However, so as a comment uh, on this idea, uh, if P is a period of the periodic function F, Half P is not necessarily a period. For example, just to show you this, for example, if you look at sine X, uh, what is the period? The period is 2 pi. That means the function repeats itself every 2 pi units. But if you take half P, that's pi, this is not a period. The function does not repeat every pi units, right? If you draw the sine x, if you draw sine x, like this, this is 2 pi. The function doesn't repeat every pi units. It, it repeats every 2 pi units. So if you take a period, so if you take a period and you multiply it with a positive integer, you still have a period. But if you divide it, you're not getting a period, okay? You're not getting a period. Uh, we need more properties uh, of periodic functions. So let's say uh, more uh, properties. Uh, uh, let's take if f and g are periodic of period p, then So imagine uh, you have two functions, two periodic functions, uh, having the same period, like, for example, the sine and cosine, they have the same period. Uh, can, we say, can we say the sine and the tan have the same period? Yes, we can, because the sine has period 2 pi. The tan has a period of 2 pi. Okay, what we did in, in, the, in a previous example, when we, when we uh, discussed the tan, sorry, where is the tan? Uh, here's the tan, we said the period is, is pi, but I think now we agree that we can say also the period is 2 pi, because all multiples of pi are periods. So imagine you have two functions, like the sine and tan, like the sine and cosine, like any two functions having the same period p, then we have some, some simple conclusions, in fact. Uh, then, if you take f plus g, it will be periodic, of period P. If you take F minus G, it will be periodic of period P. If you take F times G, it will be the same. If you take F over G, it will be the same. Of course, here we must pay attention uh, to the domain uh, where the domain should not 
be uh, zero. Uh, why? So let's take any of these properties and see why this is uh, why this is a true. Uh, so for example, let's see the third one. So if you take the function h of x equals f of x, that's the meaning of f times g. You're multiplying the two functions. So if you're assuming that the two functions f and g have period p, let's see. Let's see uh, what is h of x plus p. We're, we're claiming that uh, this product has the period p. So we must check h of x plus p. What is that? It's f of x plus p times g of x plus p. But because f has period p, f of x plus p is just f of x, and g of x plus p is g of x. But what is f of x times g of x? It is h of x. So yes, so in this example, in this case, if f and g have same period p, and you multiply the two functions, you still have, so h is periodic of period p. Nice. The same for division, the same for addition, uh, and so on. But we need to pay attention to a little point, like the tan and uh, sine cosine. Uh, so remember, uh, so in this, in these properties, in these properties, if you have two functions having the same period, dividing them gives you a function of the same period. For example, the sine and cosine have period 2 pi, right? But when we divided them, so we get the tan function, the period is not 2 pi, it is pi. It is completely true to say that 2 pi is a period, but also pi is a period. So here I like to write this remark. So this remark, uh, first of all, let's denote or let's call the smallest uh, positive period of a periodic function. Let's call it the fundamental period. So for example, for example, if you take the function sine x, sine x, it has infinitely many periods. Uh, it has the period 2 pi and all multiples of 2 pi. Now, what is the smallest period of these? It is 2 pi. So this is what we mean by the fundamental period. Uh, for example, if you take the function tan x, uh, we, we showed that we showed that tan x has a period of pi and all positive integer multiples of pi are periods. So 2 pi is a period, 4 pi is a period, 3 pi is a period. But what is the fundamental period? It is pi. It is pi. So uh, the fundamental period, it is the smallest uh, period uh, of the function. Now, what I want to say now is, uh, let's go back to this remark. So if you have two functions having the same period, you multiply, you divide, you add, you still have the same period but not necessarily the same fundamental period. And this is clarified in the tan x example. So my remark is, so the fundamental period is not preserved in f plus g, f minus g, f times g, f over g. And let me say is not Okay, because uh, sometimes it is a preserved, so to be accurate is not necessarily preserved. And, okay, so what do we mean by, by, by this remark? So, F and G may have a fundamental period of P, but F times G or plus g, minus g, over g, may have uh, a smaller fundamental period. Like, if you look at the example, sine x and cosine x, what was the fundamental period of sine? 2 pi. What was the fundamental period of cosine? 2 pi. When we divided them, we get tan. What is the fundamental period? It is pi. So we have a smaller period 
than the original functions. However, this does not contradict the fact that 2 pi is still a period for 10x. So the, the, the period as a period in general is preserved. So you start with two functions having the same period 2 pi. The result for sure will have a period of 2 pi. But as a fundamental period, it may change. This is uh, this is this remark, okay? This is very important. This is extremely important. Okay, so this remark was about uh, if you have, uh, this property was about if you have functions having the same period. But now the question is, what about functions? So let's look at another property. What about functions? So if f and g do not have the same period. What happens? So imagine f has period of 2, g has period of 3. What about f plus g? Could it be periodic? Is it periodic? So, and if it's periodic, what is the new period? If, if the two periods that we start with are the same, then the new function will be periodic of the same period. But what about functions that have different periods? Uh, so this remark or this property is about uh, this case. So, so if f is periodic of period p1, say, and if g is periodic, sorry, g, of period, another period, so this is p1, this is p2, and so we are adding one condition. So if you divide the two periods and you get a rational number, what do we mean by rational number? So we mean... Uh, integer numbers. So imagine you have two periods, you divide them, you get an integer number over an integer number. In this case, then, if you look at f plus g, or f minus g, or f times g, or f divided by g, then these functions are, they will be periodic of period now, what is the new period? The new period is you, you cross multiply. So if you say this times this or this times that, that's a true. So if period uh, n1 p2 or n2 p1, okay? So before proving this uh, property, so this is the proof, it's very simple. Uh, let's see a simple example. Let's see a simple example. So let's say if f, has period, so it is periodic, and it has period 3, and g has period 4. In this case, if you divide, so if you denote this by p1, the first period, this is the second period, if you divide the two periods, what do you get? You get 3 over 4. Is it an integer over an integer? Yes, it is. So my conclusion is that if you look, for example, at f times g, yes, it is periodic. This will be periodic. Now, what is the period of this periodic function? You cross multiply. So if you say 4 times this or 3 times this, it, it will be the same thing. So the new period is either 4 times 3 or 3 times 4. That's 12, right? So the new period will be 12. However, again, however, this is 12. This is 12 may not be the fundamental period. So, okay, we started with two functions having different periods, 3 and 4. We divided them and so on. But is the new period uh, the fundamental period? Uh, we need to check. So we need, like, additional information or we need more analysis to see if this is the fundamental period. It's not our goal now to discuss the fundamental period. So let's go back now, after clarifying this uh, property, let's go back and see why uh, this property is true. So let's see a little uh, proof, an easy proof of uh, this property. So again, uh, what is this property about? Uh, it says f has period p1, g has period p2, right? Now remember, if the two functions, if the two functions uh, have the same period, we are done, and we proved it here. Remember, in this property, if f and g have uh, p as a period, we proved how the product have has the same period, and the same proof goes for the sum, uh, the difference, and the division. Now, in, in, in this property, we want to show uh, how things work 
when the two functions have different periods. So if f has a period p1, g has another period p2, I know that, I know that by the other property that if you multiply p1 with any integer, you still have a period. And if you multiply p2 with any integer, you still have a period for g, for example, or for f. So if I select p1 and multiply it with n2, and p2 I multiply it with n1, then this is still a period. And this is still a period. So f has period p1, I multiply it with the integer n2, it's still a period. p2 is a period for g, I multiply it with n1, it's still a period. But in this case, what happens? In this case, these two numbers are the same. Why are they the same? Because this is what my assumption is. If you divide p1 by p2, you get n1 over n2. That means n2 times p1 is equal to n1 p2. So what happened here is we started with two functions having different periods, but then we unified the period. So we made both functions have the same period. So now I can say f and g have the same period. What is the same period? It's n2 p1 or n1 p2. They are the same. So, yes, so f plus g has a period of n2 p1 or n1 p2 because this, this property has been proved before. If the two functions have the same period, add them, subtract, multiply, divide, you will still have the same uh, period. So this is this is uh, the proof of this property, and this is the application uh, of this property. Uh, now, is it possible uh, to have functions uh, having different periods where the quotient of the two periods is not a rational number? It is possible. To see, the, to see an example, uh, let's see this property first. So, uh, one more property. Uh, for periodic functions. So if f is periodic of period p and if a, just a number, uh, is a positive number, then the function g of x, which is equal to a f of ax has period uh, p over a. So what, what does this mean? Before proving uh, this property, so for example, for example, if you look at the function sine x, sine x has period of what? Of 2 pi. So the function repeats itself every 2 pi units. Now, if you go to this function and you say, okay, let me take sine 2x. What is, what is the period of this new function? The period is, so the, the comparison between the two functions, if you compare the old and the new function, we obtain the second function from the first by replacing x with ax. So the idea, the new period will be, will be 2 pi, the original period, divided by a, which is 2, so this is pi. So sine 2x will have period pi, not 2 pi. Of course, if the function has period pi, can we say it has a period of 2 pi? Yes. But usually we are interested uh, in the smallest uh, possible period. So this is the meaning uh, of this uh, property. Uh, now let's see the proof of this property. So I want to prove, so what do we want to prove? We want to prove that, so assume uh, if f is periodic of period p, uh, let's define g of x as f of ax. Uh, we want to prove that g has period of p over a. Okay, this is what we want to prove. So how do we prove this? Uh, to show that g is periodic, so we take g of x plus the proposed period and compute it. In the end, if we get g of x, that's exactly the meaning of a periodic function. Uh, so what is g of anything? g of x, according to the definition, okay, this is the definition of g. So g of x is f of a multiplied with x, but I'm not computing g of x, I'm computing 
g of x plus p over a. So I replace x with this. If you expand, this will be ax plus, and you multiply a with p over a, you get p. But now, uh, from this line to this line, uh, I know that f is of period what? Of period p. What is the meaning of f having a period p? It means that f of anything plus p is exactly f of the thing. This is the meaning of a periodic function. So if you take f of ax plus p, this is exactly f of ax. But f of ax is what? It is g of x. So the idea, we started with g of x plus p over a, we reached g of x. This is exactly the meaning of g uh, having period p over a. So g is of period p over a. This is uh, the proof. So very simple proofs, just understanding uh, the meaning of uh, a periodic function uh, enables us to uh, prove all these properties. Uh, so again, uh, this property means, uh, just uh, quickly, uh, if you take the function, for example, cosine x, uh, what is the period? It's 2 pi. So if you multiply the x with any number, like cosine 3x, what is the new period? It's 2 pi over 3. For example, you take 10x, what is the period? It's pi, you can say 2 pi, but again, we are interested in the smallest period. Uh, then, if you multiply the x with 4x, so what is the new period for 10, 4x? It will be pi over 4. This is the meaning uh, of, this, of this property. Now, I, I can say the most significant property of periodic functions, this is, in my opinion, this is the most uh, significant property uh, for uh, periodic functions. So if f is periodic, period p then then if you take the integral from a to b f of x dx it will be equal to from a to b uh, okay let's say I'm not from a to b sorry oops we deleted by mistake. Can 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 we? Uh, no. So we can't get it back. So again, property. This is the most significant. Oops. As if f is periodic of period p then so if you take the integral if you take the inter, uh, integral uh, from a to a plus p uh, f of x dx it will be equal to the uh, integral from b uh, to b plus p uh, f of x dx for any a, b. What is the meaning, what is the meaning uh, of this property? Uh, so if you look at uh, the two integrals, if you look at the two integrals and you compare the limits, the limits on the left are a up to a plus b. The limits on the right are b, another number, up to b plus b. Uh, the b could be here between a and a plus b, but in general, in general, it can be anywhere. Uh, so what, what's the comparison between the two integrals? So the length of this interval is p, the length of this interval is p. So basically what this property says is that uh, if you take, if you take an interval of length p and you integrate the periodic function, you get the same answer. This means, before proving this property, uh, this means, if you look, for example, at sine x, sine cube x, and here you may remember what we were, we were doing in, in the previous chapter. For example, you take sine cube x, you integrate it from 0 to 2 pi. 
Now we know that sine x is of period 2 pi. So the length of the interval of integration is 2 pi. So if you take the integral over 0 to pi, it will be equal to, for example, from pi to 3 pi. They will be equal without arguing, without computations. They will be equal. Also, if you take the integral from negative pi to pi, it will be the same thing exactly. Because from negative to pi to pi, the length of the interval is 2 pi. So basically, because sine x is, a, is an odd function, because sine x is an odd function, sine cube is an odd function, and the integral from minus pi to pi of an odd function is zero. This is why in the previous chapter, we used to say, once we see an integral like this, we say zero. Okay, we justified it uh, in a certain way in that chapter, but this is the easier uh, justification. You can change the interval from zero to two pi to any other interval uh, of length 2 pi. This is a very significant property and we will see the importance of this property in uh, the analysis in Fourier series. Okay, uh, now geometrically what does it mean? Geometrically it means, and this is very easy to uh, to see, to visualize. So if you take a periodic function, and I keep drawing this thing for periodic functions, then you repeat it. So imagine you have this periodic function, okay? So now if you integrate uh, from this number here to this number here, uh, let's say this is minus p over 2, this is minus p over 2. I think it's very clear that if the period uh, is p, I'm taking a symmetric function, so this is minus p over 2, this is p over 2. Uh, sorry, this is positive p over 2. Uh, so if you... <coughs> <coughs> So this is an interval of length p. If, if you integrate the function over this interval, you will get exactly this area, right? Now say, okay, I don't want to take uh, this interval. I want to take another interval. Uh, for example, the easy choice, the other easy choice, if you take the interval from here to here, uh, this interval has length p. So yes, it's very clear that you still have uh, the same area, and so you have the same uh, integral. But what about if you change uh, the behavior of, of, of your uh, interval? And let's say, if you say, okay, I want to take a number here, okay, and add p to that number. Now, when you add p to that number, you will get something here, right? So if you take this number here to this number here, let's say this is alpha, so this will be alpha plus p, okay? Because I know, I know this length here is p, so if you start a little before this point, you must stop a little before this point. Okay, and now compute the integral over this new p, the, the parable period. So you will take it and you will compute, you will get exactly this area, right? Now what's the relation between this parable area and the green area, for example? Uh, the idea is this. Uh, if you draw this line here, here, and you draw this line here, I think we all agree that this area here is exactly this area here. So basically, if you cut this area and you paste it, you will get exactly this. And again, we're getting back to the same area. So you, so you are getting back to uh, this area and this area. This is exactly uh, the integral over this period or, or over this period. This is the a graphical justification of uh, this is a property. Now let's see how to prove this a property. So now I want to prove. So I want to prove uh, that if you take the integral from a to a plus p, it will be exactly uh, b b plus p for any uh, for any uh, function. Sorry, for any a uh, and b. Okay, uh, so the idea, the idea, okay, we saw the idea geometrically. Now I want the math, we want the math. Uh, so let's define G of A as the integral from A to A plus P f of x dx. 
uh, look carefully to this function. So the a now, the a now is a variable. So the a could be one, could be zero, could be could be any number. So my function g depends on a, and the a uh, we see it only in the limit of the integral. If we differentiate this function, uh, how do you differentiate a function like this? Remember, we, we need to apply the fundamental theorem of calculus. What does the fundamental theorem of calculus say? It says you take the upper limit, plug it in f, times the derivative of the upper limit, minus do the same thing for the lower limit. So basically, when you differentiate, you get f of x plus, uh, sorry, f of a plus p, times the derivative of the upper limit with respect to a, which is 1, minus you take the a, plug it down, and times the derivative of the lower limit, which is 1. So basically, you're getting f of a plus p minus f of a. But I know, we, you know that f is periodic of period p. So if the period is p, that means f of a plus p is equal to f of a. So this is equal to 0, right? So what, what did we reach? We, so g prime is equal to 0. But we know that if g is equal, if g prime is equal to zero. What is the function whose derivative is zero? It's only the constant function. So now I conclude that g is the constant function. Wow, it's very nice. What is the meaning? So what is g? So this is what we did. So g of a is the integral from a to a plus p f of x dx uh, is the constant or a constant function. What is the meaning of the constant function? For example, if you have a function uh, f of x equals 5, this is a constant function. This means if you plug any number into this function, you get the same result, 5. So you, you plug 10, f of 10 is 5, f of 5 is 5, f of anything is 5. This is the meaning of a constant function. So if you say g here is a constant function, that means, so if you plug any values, you get the same thing, right? So g of a is exactly equal to, to g of b for any a for any b. That means the what's g of a? It's a, a plus p f of x dx. And what is g of b? It's the integral from b to b plus p f of x dx. This is, I think, this is the easiest proof uh, for this property. Of course, other proofs you can, you, you, you can argue this way. Like this geometric understanding, you can translate it and make another proof for uh, this property. So again, this is one of the most interesting properties. Uh, remember it, if you integrate a periodic function over any interval of length p, the period, you get the same. Uh,